Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. Thank you for joining me as I continue to take you through the instructions for the different techniques in the quilt called Great Lakes Voyage, otherwise known as Learning to Quilt 2. Now, you, some of you might be wondering, what do you mean Learning to Quilt 2? What happened to Learning to Quilt 1? I'm going to show you the book. It's underneath here. But let me first take you through what we've done so far on the Great Lakes Voyage. So behind me is what I call the dark colorway. And here we've done the Mariner's Compass, the reverse applique, and then we put on the large setting triangles. And we ended last time by making the quarter square triangles. This quilt is showing you the light colorway. So in the book, I give you the yardage requirements for both because there are some variations. But please know the, the whole excitement of making a quilt is choosing your own colors and choosing your own placement. So you don't have to follow my color placement. You do what does best for you, okay? So with the light color one, again, I made the quarter square triangles, and today we're going to work on the Lemoyne stars. So there's quite a few Lemoyne stars. I think there's like 20 of them. So just know the Lemoyne stars being one of my favorite blocks because it does require precision, it is going to take you a little while. So just know that when you jump into doing Lemoyne stars. Um, and also, I'm not going to cheat with Lemoyne stars. I'm not going to be doing things, oh yeah, so no set in seams. Like, I think you're afraid of set in seams. I think you should be proud to be able to do a set in seam, and you need to know that they're not nearly as hard as some people try to make you think they are. Okay? So I want you to notice one thing about the quarter square triangles, because this is the one that I've done, the one behind me, and the one, the light colorway, the quarter square triangles really create this kind of an eye or hourglass type of a shape. Now when I'm working on the one here, so this is a working piece that we've been working on through, I actually changed the way that it looks. So if you look here, I turned that block. It was, on the other two quilts, it was this way, and I turned it that way. So this now looks like a solid square. It's not. There is a seam right there. And then this edge kind of looks like a prairie point. Why did I do that? Just because it at my whim. I was I was didn't care for that color next to their color. So when I'm working on a quilt, it's quite possible, actually quite likely, <laughs> that when I'm working on a quilt, I'll have, oh, in my head, I know that those two colors are going to work, and then, no, they didn't work. Change things as you go. Be brave. Be, be curious about maybe what colors may go with what colors. Don't get yourself stuck into thinking you have to do what the designer did or you have to do what the gal in your quilt bee did. Do you. Do the colors that please you. Switch things around. Do whatever makes you happy. Now, with the Learning to Quilt, that is this book. So the Learning to Quilt is my first book, and it takes you through all of the basic requirements. Along with this book are a lot of videos, a lot of little shorter videos, some longer. So sometimes I might mention something in the process of the voyage, the Great Lakes voyage, that you might be going, wait a minute, I don't think I quite understand that. Well, go back to Learning to Quilt. Maybe take a look at that. Now, if you've already done the Learning to Quilt series, then you're a step of ahead. And I do recommend that you do the Learning to Quilt first, and then you maybe tackle the Great Lakes voyage. Now, I do have a couple of other books. The Great Basics is what I would truly call my true beginner book, mainly because it only has a few techniques. But it is an interesting quilt. I didn't just make nine patches that were straight, I put them on points so they have the setting triangles on the edge, which always, always makes a quilt more interesting. And then my third book was The Sunset Over Dublin. Now, I do have lots of little patterns, but these are the books. And then, just because I think it's fun, I did make different color comb binding on my books. I don't know what the color comb binding is going to be on Learning to Quilt 2. We will find out soon enough. So when we come back, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a Lemoyne star. So let's start a Lemoyne star. Now this particular Lemoyne star is going to finish about 8 inches. The most difficult thing about a Lemoyne star for me is trying to figure out the math involved. Um, because it's not like it's, you know, divided into four equal parts or three equal parts. There is math involved. 
but I could not explain to you in a million lifetimes what that math is. How I design my Lemoyne stars is I use Electric Quilt. Now, Electric Quilt is a computer designing program for making quilts and when I'm done I can say I want it to be eight inches and it makes me an eight inch one and tells me what size to cut it. So just know that that for me is the most difficult part about a Lemoyne star. Now with a Lemoyne star you have your diamond sections, you have your setting squares, and you have your setting triangles. We're going to start with the diamond sections. Now the first thing you'll want to do is to cut your strips. All right. So for this 8 inch one I cut these 2 and an eighth inches. That can be a little confusing too because very rarely does a Lemoyne star have something that is you know, 2 inches, 3 inches, 2 and a half. No, there's always these strange measurements because of the diamond setting. So this was cut 2 and an eighth inches and I sewed the two strips together. So these are my two diamond points. I've sewed them together. So there's my purple and there's my orange. And I'd sewed them together with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now it's time to cut it. So what you will want to do for the cutting is first of all get yourself a smaller ruler. Trying to do this, so I don't have it handy right now, but trying to do this with your big 6x24 is just really kind of cumbersome. So I highly recommend that you get yourself a smaller ruler to do this. Then you also want to be sure that you always cut all your diamonds in the exact same way. Now what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to tell you that your first cut is going to be with the 45 degree angle, which is right here. Now I have marked my angles, that little orange bit, with the Omni Grid Glow Tape. So that might be something you might want to consider, just so that it helps you see the measurement a little easier. Well, this 45 degree angle it also is another one that goes here. So on an OmniGrid ruler, it crisscrosses. So I could start my cut here, cutting off the angle this way. You want to be sure that whatever you do, you do it the same every time. So I got to try to remember what I did. All right. So here is one of the pieces I made. If I put my red on top, there we go. Yep, I cut it at this angle. Whatever you do, do it consistently. And so I, I mean, this is common. I'll start to do it again. I can't remember. And so I grab one that's already made and kind of go through the, yep, that's the angle that I need. So lining up the angle on that 45 degree line of your ruler, you want to make the angle cut. All right. Now turn that around and let me turn my mat too. So I've got a little bit length to work with. Now you're going to cut the actual diamond shape. Now I told you this was two and an eighth inches wide. That means my next cut is also two and an eighth inches wide. And with my glow tape on my ruler, I can see that my 45 is still here and this is two and an eighth inches. Getting that first cut is probably the most difficult part. You'll just, I know you will because I do, you'll get your ruler and you'll be like, okay, which way, how did I measure this in here? Get that tape on your ruler so then it'll be very clear to you how you just tuck it right in there on the ruler. And then you make your cut. And this is one of those times that I would not use power cutting, which reminds me, if you don't know what power cutting is, you might want to go back to one of those previous series. But with this, I'm not going to do power cutting because I cannot add two and an eighth and two and an eighth and two and an eighth and two and an eighth with any sense of confidence. I would be second guessing myself constantly. So I'm just going to continually move it over using the 45 degree angle and the two and an eighth on the vertical of the ruler to cut my diamonds. So I've got them all cut. Now it's time to open that seam. So I'm going to just finger press open that seam. It's not really required at this point that you actually press it with an iron. If you want to, go for it. You've got my permission, but it's really not necessary. So I'll just kind of take my nail and run it through the middle. So now I've got my diamond sections done. The next step is to cut your setting squares and triangles. So I've pre-cut my setting squares. So there they are right there. So my setting squares are cut. And in this case, these are two and an 
two and seven eighths inches to meet with to work with this diamond and then these are my setting triangles now the setting triangle is going to start with a larger square this is cut four and a half inches and then you're going to cut that on the diagonal twice with that cut on the diagonal twice you have yielded four triangles one two three four and that's what's needed for each of your Lemoyne stars so now we can take our diamond sections let me press this one more Actually, I think I got to cut one more too. There we go. One, two, whoops, stay put, little guys. Three, and let me cut one more. Two and an eighth inches on the 45 degree. So there is our design with our setting triangles on the north, south, east, and west of each of the diamonds. And then these are our setting squares. Looks like i got to cut one more of those, but I'll do that off camera. All right. Now, I will always want to start sewing my triangles in first. But before I can sew that triangle, I need to make a little mark on that um, point of that. And there it is. And that mark needs to be a quarter of an inch in on both sides. Now, technically, I could take my ruler and draw a little line here and then turn the triangle and draw a little line there. And that intersection is my quarter inch intersection. What do I really do? I just take and make a dot right there. Am I guessing? Yeah. I'm just guessing. It's close. It's close enough. And until you get comfortable with how close is a quarter of an inch, you might want to do the little Xing. But just take and make a little dot right there. Now this dot, these, this marker I think has turned out perfect for this. Previous to this, if you've watched any of my previous um, series where I've done a Lemoyne star, I've had you mark with a permanent marking pen because that uh, little dot is going to end up in your block. But that can be really be scary, marking it with a permanent marking pen. Friction has just come out with a new felt tip pen. So the Friction pens have been around for about five years now. So this is 2021. About five years they came out with them. They were actually created for office workers to be able to write with what looks and feels like a pen, but yet it can be erased. Well, some brilliant quilter realized that if you mark on fabric with it, you could erase it with your iron. Just sweep the iron over the top of it and it goes away. Now, there's some people that have controversies about when to use it and when not. I just say test it. If you like it, like use it. If you don't, don't. I like it. I use it all the time. Well, they just came out with this one that is a felt tip. So now you can actually put it on the point and just go like this, and you've got a beautiful little point that you can see. So that's how I have marked my quarter inches. Now I'm going to take you through the steps that I do for very specific. First do this, then next, and next. And then I'm going to tell you how I really do it because I take some shortcuts because I've been making Lemoyne stars for a really long time. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to take these two to the machine and we're going to sew them together so that we can have like a little, um, I need to have a little piece for my leader. Okay, there we go. All right, so going to the machine, we now have my little leader. Now, at my machine, I have put my guidelines for quilting. This is this, this, is this little piece of sticky that's raised up about, I don't know, 16th of an inch or something. Sticks down onto my machine, makes it really easy for me to be able to find my scant quarter inch. I also have my open toe applique foot. Now, I want to say I put the open toe applique foot on so that you could see it better, but in truth, I really like it. I like that I can really see where I'm turning when I use my open toe applique foot. And then I'm going to move my needle over to the right so that from 
the guidelines for quilting, which is right there on the edge of my foot, to where my needle is, is going to be my scant quarter inch. Word of warning, your open toe applique foot may not be, and probably isn't, the same width as your regular foot. So you're going to have to do your measurements to find out where your actual scant quarter inch is if you're choosing to chew, to switch to your open toe applique foot. All right. So I think I've already got my machine threaded. Let's see. Did I? Oh, yep, I do. All right. So my machine is threaded. That's always a good thing. And I'm going to stop right at the end of my leader. And now I'm going to take my diamond section and my setting triangle section. Going to flip my diamond onto the top of it and match up the points so that this is matched up with the triangle underneath. And I'm going to start sewing on that point. Now be cautious that you're not, that your machine doesn't take, you really have to have that leader on there so your machine doesn't take that point in and start sewing at a scant quarter inch. When I get about, I don't know, I'm almost halfway down the end of that, that is when I actually will pluck those little stitches out. So using your seam ripper or your awl, let's see, let's not block your view, there we go, is those little stitches and you can just pluck them out, maybe three or four of them, so that you can fold this down and see that intersection. So let's see if I can do this so you can see it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but here, right there, is that intersection mark. Okay. Now I am going to sew until my needle goes off my purple fabric into my green fabric right into that intersection. Now sometimes that means you've got to ease your diamond up a little bit or stretch your diamond out. I think I probably ease it up more than I stretch it out. But hold that there. And so until it goes off the purple fabric right there, now it is only in the green fabric. Then lift your presser foot. Unfold your other diamond and spin this around. So now, do you see that triangle has now turned so it is pointing right toward me? Now I know that that's where my next seam is going to be. Put your right hand on the diamond, I'm sorry, on the triangle, and spin the diamond around. I'm trying to do that without blocking your view. Okay? Until I've got them lined up. So now my orange diamond has matched up with my green setting triangle point underneath. And now I can just continue right off. Now let's do it again. So I'm going to take my triangle section, my diamond section, flip it over, match those points up, then put it in, being cautious to be sure that point is all the way in there. When I get about halfway down, I use my seam ripper or all to kind of pluck out. I don't cut those stitches, or I try not to anyway. I just kind of pluck them out. So now this is plucked out a little ways. Fold this down. Then I can see my dot. My dot is right there. And so move this, the, the top diamond, up and down until you can see that dot. So until your machine, until the needle goes off your diamond fabric, which in my case is purple, and into the green. Now I can spin it around. So there's my triangle underneath. Whoops, come back here, little guy. There he is. My triangle underneath is now pointed toward me. Now hold that down with your right hand and spin. Oops, forgot to lift my presser foot. That'll make it a lot easier. Spin the diamond section around until the diamond lines up with the triangle underneath and then continue. Now one thing I did forget to mention and you know shame on me when I'm working with Lemoyne stars I always pre-size my fabrics. So these fabrics that I'm working on with are a little bit stiffened and actually I shouldn't even say a little bit. They're kind of a little lot stiffened with the spray sizing. And that is really important when you're working with all of these points that you're going to be twisting and turning them as you go. If you spray size these first, 
it kind of feels like sewing on paper. And if you just imagine how easy it would be to turn the fabric one way or the next when they're stiffened up that way, you will understand why I've asked you to do that. So the next step is to press these down to the diamond section. So I'm going to get my iron going, we'll get these pressed, and we'll go on to the next step. My setting triangles are set into my diamonds with the set in seam. Now it's time to prepare our squares. So to do this, you need to take your diamond sections and put them together. So I'm going to take this, and when I do this, I like to kind of open that up so I can see that those seams are riding one on top of another. Because remember, these seams are set pressed open, not like to one side like we do with a nine patch or another simplified block. With these, I keep them pressed open so that I'm able to do my set in seam quite easily. There we go. And again, I kind of open that up, make sure my seams are matching. Now I can go to my sewing machine. So at my sewing machine, I'm going to sew with my scant quarter inch right down that um, seam there. Now be careful that those little, the seams underneath don't get flipped up. That's a common kind of thing that happens using the scant quarter inch. And again, when I get, I don't know, maybe a third of the way up, then I pick this up and I match up that seam. I make sure that the purple and red are right on top of another. Even though it means that something might not be kind of lining up here, well, that means that I cut it like a human being, and maybe they're not all exactly the same. And here comes my second one, always trying to do two at a time. I Honestly, when I'm doing these, I'll do eight stars at a time at least. Once I get about a third of the way up, then I lift up the top diamond and make sure that that is lined up. Can you see that? It's a little bit dark, but lined up right on top the one below, and so all the way off. And I only have one leader, so I'm going to have to reach around the back and cut that off to go back onto my leader. Now back at your pressing station, you're going to press this seam open also. So with a Lemoyne star, all of the star seams are pressed open, which, just in case you're wondering, is the same as when I'm doing here. Let me get that out of the way so you can see better. If I'm doing a lone star, when I put in those large setting triangles and setting squares, I'm doing those in the same way, pressing up the seams open. Oops, you stay put, little guy. There we go. I'm always a very patient presser. I talk about that a lot, um, especially in the beginner, beginner books. Um, but taking your time, letting things, letting the fabric actually press so that it stays in place. You hear the steam. I use a lot of steam. After I press it from the back, then I take it to the front and press it. And then let it cool. If you let it cool, that keeps, if you don't let it cool, when you pick it up, it just kind of turns and twists and it kind of starts dancing on you. So be sure that you let it cool a little bit before you pick it up. So now when I have two halves, I can piece in my two, two of my setting squares. Now I mentioned that I do those marks on the squares, or that's how I want to recommend that you do them. I got to tell you, I don't do them that way. I, I've made enough of these, and some of you might be there already. You've made enough of these kinds of things that you really don't need to put those little dots there. You can just look at it, and you know, when you get to the end, you know that you have enough of that quarter inch. So we're going to take these, and I'm not going to use the dot this time. Flipping this over onto the square, and again, I'm going to line up, so like I lined up the triangle points, now I'm going to line up the straight edge of the square on the two sides. And then you can put a pin there, mainly because i got to take it over to my sewing machine. And then same thing here. Flip over the right side onto the square and line it up. Right there. So now going to our sewing machine. We're going to start right there on the corner. 
And when I get about halfway, this is the showing you how I really do it scenario. I get to about halfway. I don't pluck those seams. I just take it and I force it open. There we go. And then I continue on. Now, if plucking the seams makes you feel good, then pluck the seams. I went one stitch too far, so I'm just going back one stitch. But if you just open it up like that, just pull it on the two ends, it works fine. Lift your presser foot, line up the square. So if you're looking underneath, there, there's the light, there it is. My square, the other side of my square is now lined up with my guidelines for quilting. Gonna hold that down with my right hand and spin, spin, spin until the edge of that next diamond is now lined up with my square. Line up this bottom edge, then I kind of reach behind here and be sure that everything is straight to the back and then I can sew right off. And grab my next one. So sew till I'm about a halfway down. Then I just fold that over and make those seams just kind of open up for me. And this just comes from so many times making Lemoyne stars. I pretty much can make them in my sleep. I love making them. I love making them because I love the design, but I also love making them because people are like, oh, you did a set in seam? Like it was, you know, some heroic action. It's not. It's just a set in seam, and you can do it. It's not like it's, um, it's not like so difficult that you need to avoid them. You don't need to avoid set in seams. Are your first ones going to be perfect? Probably not. This is like my 99th hundredth one, and it's not perfect, so I wouldn't expect your first ones to be perfect. But maybe when you've made 9,900 of them, they will be. I don't know. So now we're going to take and press this. Now with the diamond section, the triangle section, I mean, I pressed it toward the diamonds. And this is different than previous videos. If you watched when I did Lemoyne Star in the Sunset over Dublin, I was recommending that you pressed it toward the diamond. Not that that's wrong. It does work. And my reasoning for doing it that way is so that oftentimes you might get a little, like this might open a little far and that green piece here will cover up the hole. I don't have that happen very much anymore. So I no longer press it toward the star because it makes these very, very bulky. Instead, I press it toward the square. So one side at a time. Press that one, then turn it because this little guy is going to come back. He makes this cute little triangle dude there, right there at the seam. And then press him flat. And then there's my second one. So I press them from one side first, spin them around, and then press the second one. And then press them flat. So now I have two, oops, caught that little guy, made a little, I, pressing is important. So if I accidentally flip a little edge up, you know I'm going to go back and fix it. I'm not going to let it just be like this strange little fold on there. So now my two sides are done and it's time to sew the center seam. When you're sewing the center seam, you want these two points to match up. And the only way that I know of to make that happen is to pin it. So I'm going to put the two sides together going to take my pin from the back of the top section and put it right there in the intersection of the purple, orange, and red. Then lift it up. Now I can see the intersection below. Now I can just match that point up there. Ooh, matched him up. Then put my pin straight up and down as I grab another pin to keep, to secure that in place. Now I can take this pin out and I can start sewing on this end of the diamond to the other end. There we go. Same quarter inch seam allowance. Now when you get to the middle, just be cautious. There's a lot of little, you know, dog ears underneath here. Be cautious that they're not flopping around and you want your needle 
to be aiming right there to the intersection. Now that should be your scant quarter of an inch, but there's no guarantee it's going to actually be a scant quarter inch. So you might have to go in a little bit or out a little bit so that you don't lose that. When I get about a third of a way on that diamond is when I pick this up to make sure I'm lining those up and then I can sew all the way off. And grab my scissors. There they are. And sew off onto the leader. And I mentioned to be careful that things didn't flop around. Can you see that? This little purple guy, he almost got flopped around, so I'm just going to go back and press him. But that's what I mean. These little guys might get caught on the top or the bottom, so I just be cautious of it, that it doesn't happen. And if it does happen, I just say, oh, well, I'll just press that right and fix it as, as best I can. Will I take out the seam if it gets flipped over and stitched? No, I will not. I just let it be. It wanted to be that way. I don't want to think that I want to change it that much. So now let's open that seam. And this one's a little tougher. You know what else you can do when you're doing this? If the big iron just seems a little much, you could use your little clover iron to get these seams opened first and then, whoops, then flip it over and use your large iron to be sure that you get a nice crisp seam after that. The clover won't press it enough to be crisp. All right. So our last two squares go in next and they are going to be pieced just like these squares were. You're just going to put them in on the two ends so it's just a little bit bigger. So the idea is I like doing the setting triangles first because they're smaller parts and since setting triangles, this is a setting triangle, have a really stretchy bias edge I like to do those first when the unit is really small then put together the do the two squares then the center seam and then your last two squares. Then your Lemoyne star will be done. Now you can trim the Lemoyne star down to size a little bit if you need to. You may not need to. In this case, this should measure eight and a half inches. So I'm going to just take my ruler and see how big he is. Um, he's about eight and three eighths here, so that's a little bit shy of eight and a half. And going this way, he's about uh, actually eight and three eighths again. So he is a little bit small, which means that my seams were a little teensy bit bigger than they needed to be. So that makes him an eighth of an inch smaller than he's supposed to be. Does that bother me? That does not bother me. If I cannot figure a way to make a block that's only an eighth of an inch too small fit into the whole quilt, then I probably need to stop quilting only because that's going to antagonize you. You're just going to be in agony thinking, oh no, they're not going to match up. Yes, they are. It's fabric. You can stretch fabric and ease things in. So do not worry about a block if it is a little bit small. But if he were a little bit big, you could trim a little bit. So if you're looking at this block, see how this is like sticking in a little bit and he's sticking out? You might want to trim that if your block is too big, and you can do that. What you cannot do is try to square the block up. If you try to square the block up with one of your square rulers, you will ine inevitably end up cutting off some of your points. So I recommend that instead you use a smaller, skinnier ruler and you just do one edge at the time. And so what I'm doing is I am lining up the quarter inch line, so from the edge of the ruler to that first quarter inch mark, and I'm placing that quarter inch mark on the points of the star. And if I do that, then I can trim off this side, making, making him a little bit straighter. Then I'm going to spin him around. Same thing. Line the quarter inch up on the point. In this case, there's nothing to cut off, like except two threads. One more time here. And this one, he's a little bit shy of a quarter of an inch. And this one's a little big, but I don't think I would trim that at all and go all the way around. So you can choose to do it that way if you want. Just be super cautious that when you're doing that with any block that has points on the end of it, that you're making sure your point is a quarter of an inch from the edge of the block so that when you piece it, you won't end up cutting that triangle off. 
Our next lesson for this quilt will be taking these Lemoyne stars and turning them on point in the border and then using setting triangles on two ends to make a straight border. I hope you can join us for that. The book is available on my website, onpoint-tv. You can find the printed book there and an e-book. So if you happen to live somewhere that you don't think that you want to pay $25 shipping, I'd be happy to ship it to you. I just don't know that you want me to. You could consider purchasing the e-book. Um, the e-book is actually less expensive than the printed book, obviously. So that's always a good thing. In the ebook, there are links that will take you directly to the videos, so that's kind of easy. So if you're using the ebook, you can go, oh, Lemoyne Star, I don't remember how to do that. You'll click on a link and it'll take you right to this video. So there's good things about the ebook and good things about the printed book. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. I'd love it if you would share the videos with your quilty friends and then they can enjoy making Lemoyne Stars and the voyage, the Great Lakes Voyage quilt with you. You. Have a great day.